Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge on a Fortinet system that does have a TXV inside, okay? We can look at the subcooling rating to see uh, how much we should be charging this to or checking the charge to, all right? This system has three position king valves, all right, or three position valve. So we're going to need to take those off first. All right, in order to be able to adjust the position. What we need to do is we need to mid-seat these valves in order to check our refrigerant charge. All right, now there's no Schraders in this, no Schrader valves, okay? It's just the three position valves themselves, this and this right here, all right? Right now, it's in a position called back-seated, all right? And no refrigerant's coming out of here, all right, because of this valve. Once it's in the mid-seat range, all right, then refrigerant will be coming out because it will be connecting this line to this line back here and to this once it's mid-seated, all right? If it was all the way front-seated, that would actually cut off this refrigerant, all right, or this pipe, uh, from here, okay, so if this was front seated, actually these two will be connected, and this one will be disconnected, all right? That's typically used in a pump then, or that's the way that the units come um, from the factory with when they have refrigerant on the inside. They're front seated, all right, so you can actually be brazing the lines in and doing your pressure testing because these two are connected and this is disconnected, all right? So here we go. We're going to go ahead and connect our lines in. Both of them are connected, our handles are shut, everything's good. Now we're going to go ahead and mid-seat these. Now you don't have to go all the way, you just got to go a little bit, all right? All you're doing is just opening up the port so you can measure refrigerant, maybe just two clicks worth or so, all right? So um, we already have a temp probe on the liquid line back here, if you can see that. All right, I have the temp sensor already electrical taped onto the liquid line. All right, so we're going to check the refrigerant charge. Up on the top, it says that it's looking for, right up here on the rating plate, it says it's looking for an indoor TXV subcoin of 14 degrees. All right, so presently on the liquid line, we have 94 uh, degrees, all right, as a saturated temperature. Our actual pressure is ranging right at about... Uh, 292 or 293 or so. All right, so we follow that pressure in, all right, and we see the pink, all right, that's a saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. All right, so that's right in the middle of this coil right here, okay? Middle of the coil is 94 degrees. So as, as it rejects heat from here, it then turns into a liquid, and the temperature difference between the liquid right here and where it comes down at, and then through the liquid line right here, all right, that's the temperature decrease in liquid form. And we are looking at 83 degrees, okay? 83 degrees. All right, so 90, 94 minus 83.5, we'll say. All right, so we're looking at 10.5 degrees of subcooling. All right, now we're allowed to have within roughly three degrees plus or minus what the what the subcooling rating is. And the, so if the subcooling rating is 14 degrees, all right, and we only have 10 and a half, uh, then what we what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a little bit of refrigerant to this. Now it will work for sure, um, but uh, you know we we want to add a little bit because every time a tech comes and attaches attaches their gauges to it, um, they're going to be taking a little bit of refrigerant out every time just that, that when they're connecting, okay? Uh, what we would have to do uh, first is we'd be adding refrigerant into the vapor line, all right? And uh, once we did that and we 
what we're going to be doing is lowering that temperature there and rising the saturated temperature up higher. And what that's going to do is it's going to widen the subcooling gap, okay? And then we're going to have a higher subcooling. So what we'd really be looking for is an actual subcooling of maybe 14 to 15 degrees of subcooling, all right? But just say we had that correct subcooling. What we're going to do first is we're going to do our disconnect procedure now, all right? So we're going to put our service wrench on the liquid line and we're going to back seat it, all right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to shut that line, all right? And we shouldn't have any refrigerant escaping, all right? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that these are all tight, which they are, okay? We're going to open up the red line, all right? Now these two ports right here are disconnected from the system, all right? But what we did is by opening this valve, we connected from here to here, all right? And we're going to be letting the air out, all right? So we have the air out, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to purge the air out of the blue line. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to charge from here into the liquid vaporizer, all right? And the liquid vaporizer is going to flash the liquid back into a vapor before it puts it into the suction line, all right? So it's going to help us with that. But you don't want to just put liquid straight into the vapor compressor, okay? Because right after this is a vapor compressor. What we want to do now is we want to get these two gauge sets to uh, read the same pressure. All right, once it does that, we've successfully got all of our liquid refrigerant and put it back into our vapor line. Remember that the, uh, the liquid line can hold maybe seven, ten times more uh, refrigerant than the vapor line when the system's running. All right. During this process, just by the way, we've also made sure that our suction line temperature or saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil is above freezing as well. And it actually says that we're looking at uh, 41 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. So we are safe with that. Um, and we would just need to add just a little bit of subcooling. But, uh, but that's that. But anyway, here we go. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the rest here. I want to make sure that this is back seated all the way. Okay. Back seated meaning out. Okay. Once this back seat is out. And then we're going to disconnect this, all right? The next things that you're going to do is you're just going to spray bubble leak detector in here. Make sure that there's no bubbles coming out, all right? Sometimes you can't actually hear the refrigerant coming out, and these might not have seated down all the way. Sometimes you got to seat them pretty good, all right? But in this case, everything's looking good. There are no bubbles. Actually, this one has a little bit of a bubble, actually. So what we're going to do, yes, see, do you see that bubble growing? Okay. A little bit of a bubble growing right there. So we're going to give it a little bit more. All right. Try that again and see how it looks here. All right, now it's good. All right. We're just blowing this out with air. Just to make sure. Making sure that we get all of our leak detector out of there. All right, we can put our caps on and that's it. So now we've checked just to make sure that we're not leaking any refrigerant, all right?
You want to make sure that you're holding these back. You don't want to end up bending uh, the line set, especially where you where somebody may have brazed that. You don't want that to end up cracking. Okay, copper pipe might bend a little bit, all right, but the braze going that could crack on you. So you want to make sure that you're holding these with two wrenches. All right, very good. That's it. So hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Surface Tech Channel.